In this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a fly bonnet. Um, this blue one is the one I'm going to be making for the demonstration in the video. The black one is one I've made previously. Um, as you can see they're a super simple design, easy to make. So let's get started. So first I'm going to show you how to get a couple measurements. I put this black fly bonnet on just to, so that you can get a better idea of where the measurements are going to be and what parts they're for. So to get your pole measurement, all you want to do is measure from the back of one ear to the back of the other. So you're going to start here at the back of this ear, go around, measure to this side, and that will be your pole measurement. To get your measurement for between the ears, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just measure from here, one ear, to the other ear. The front length really depends on how far down you want it, so you measure from the edge of between the ears and you go down as far as you want in the base you can go down further or up higher so then you just want to write down your measurements like I'm doing here and you're gonna to want to keep them for future reference so this is the yarn I'm gonna be using for this fly bonnet this blue burnett lollipop if you look at the back of the label there's usually a picture of a crochet hook on here it says 3.5 millimeters so that's the size hook I'm gonna need um, if you want, you can use a different size yarn and hook, but if this is your first time crocheting, I would recommend just using the same as what I use here, because it will be a lot easier for you to follow along. So to start off, you're going to take your yarn, you're going to wrap it around in a loop, just like this, and then you're going to put your fingers through and pull, grab the end and pull it through to make a loop, just like that. And then you're going to put your hook through and pull it tight and then you're gonna make chain stitches so to do that you just wrap around pull through the loop on your hook and then you wrap around pull through the loop on your hook and you just keep doing that and each one of those makes a chain stitch so you're just gonna keep doing that until you have as many as you need um, I think for the size hook and yarn I was using it was about six stitches per inch and my pull measurement was about 11 inches so I ended up doing about 60 stitches so if your pull measurement is different you can kind of just calculate um, how many inches you will need and how many stitches per inch so I'm just going to keep wrapping around pulling through until I have 60 uh, chain stitches Okay, so I just finished my 60 chain stitches, so what I'm going to do next is finish off this row by doing one last chain stitch. And then I'm going to go into the second stitch from the hook after wrapping around. I'm going to go in the second stitch from the hook, which should look like a V shape. So you're going to go under the two loops that look, make the V, and then there should be one loop on the bottom of your hook. So you're going to go through there, then wrap around, pull the V over the part you wrapped around off the hook, and then you should have three loops left. Wrap around, pull through all three loops. And then you're going to wrap around again and do the same thing in the next V on the hook. This row is going to be hard because the chain stitches are sometimes hard to get into when they're tight. So you're just going to go under the V leaving the one loop on the back and then you're going to wrap around pull through wrap around pull through three it might be hard to tell where your stitches are but it just it looks like a V and then it should have three pieces of yarn so the two make the V on the top and then one goes on the bottom and then you go through all of them so your V should be sitting on the top of your hook and the one loop should be on the bottom so then you're gonna wrap around go through the V and then you're gonna wrap around your hook once you get through pull the V off of your hook over the part you wrapped around and then wrap around and pull through the three loops on your hook. And you're just going to keep doing this all the way down. And then I'll meet you when I'm done this row. 
Okay, so I've finished this um, next row. So I'm almost done. I have a couple of stitches left. So I'm going to wrap around, put through the V. Wrap around, pull over. Wrap around, pull through the three loops. Go underneath three, just like this. Wrap around, pull it over. Wrap around my hook, pull through the three loops. And just do that for the next couple. The last one will be hard, so it's usually tighter. Wrap around, pull under the V. Wrap around, pull through the three. Wrap around. Go through the last V, which is tight. Okay, and then wrap around, pull the V over your yarn, wrap around, and pull the yarn through all three. And then what you're going to do next to finish this row off is you're going to turn it over, and then you're going to do another chain stitch. You're going to wrap around, and then go in the first V in the next row, which is the second one from the hook, because you did that chain stitch. The V's will be a lot easier to see now and a lot easier to get through. So this row should go faster. So then you're just going to do these um, treble crochets through the whole rest of this row. So I'm just wrapping around, putting it through the V. You can see them on the top here, all the V's. And then I'm gonna wrap around, pull over, wrap around, pull through the three. And then I'm just gonna keep doing this for the whole rest of this row. And then I'll meet you back at the end again. Okay, so I'm just on the last couple stitches of this row. So I'm just gonna keep going under the V, wrapping around, pulling through, wrap around, pull under three, wrap around, put through the V, wrap around, pull through the V, wrap around, pull through all three of them. Then you just keep doing this till you get to the last one, which this is my last one. Okay, so then you wrap around, pull through the V again, wrap around, pull through all three stitches. And then to finish this row off, you turn it over again, and then you're gonna do your chain stitch again, just like that, and then you wrap around and go in your second stitch from the hook, the first stitch on that row, because it's, it's always the second stitch because you did your chain stitch. And then you just keep going with the trebles, and you're just gonna keep doing this back and forth on the rows until your piece is long enough. Okay, so I'm almost at the end of this row, and then I'll show you how to um, switch over to the next row. So I'm just going to finish up these last few stitches. So this is the last stitch. Just wrap around, pull through the V, wrap around, pull through those three stitches. And then you're gonna turn it over just like that. You're gonna wrap around again, do your chain stitch. Do a chain stitch at the end of every row. Then you wrap around, put in your first V, your second um, stitch from your hook, wrap around, pull under that V, wrap around, pull through those three loops. 
and then you just keep doing this again for your next row okay so this is what mine looks like now I think I did seven or eight rows um, so I just did it until it was about one and a half inches one and three quarter inches and yeah so now we're just gonna finish it off so what you want to do next is just take your hook out of the yarn and then pull the loop pretty big then you're gonna want to take your scissors and cut that cut leaving a pretty decent sized tail just like that then you're gonna put your fingers in the loop and pull the tail through but not let go of the end and pull the loop tight and then pull the tail all the way through the loop and just pull it tight to tie a knot so that's gonna be the back so next what you want to do is measure this um, part you just made it should be close to your pull measurement mine was 11 inches so it was really close and then what you're gonna want to do is minus your between the ears measurement from this measurement um, mine was six inches so I'm gonna minus six inches from 11 inches and then I'll be left with five inches so I'm gonna my I'm gonna divide that by two and it's gonna be two and a half inches so then I'm gonna measure two and a half inches from the side and that's where I'm gonna start my next row from right there so I'm gonna count how many stitches in that is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so I'm gonna start in on the sixteenth inch sorry the sixteenth stitch from the edge on both sides so then I'm gonna take my yarn again and I'm gonna make the loop how I started the last time, loop it around and then pull the extra through. And I'm gonna take my hook, put it in, pull it tighter on my hook. And instead of chaining, I'm gonna start off the base of the other one, but I'm gonna start in 15 stitches. So I count my 15 stitches here. And then this will be the between the ear part. So then you go into the 16th stitch, do a slip stitch. So you don't wrap around your hook first. You just put it through and then you wrap around your hook. And then you pull through both stitches. Then you're going to do a chain stitch and then wrap around and just do a treble in your next stitches so here's a treble just like that wrap around put under your v wrap around pull through the v wrap around pull through all three so i had 15 extra on both sides which adds to 30 so that means i'll have 30 stitches in the middle so i'll have to keep doing these trebles for 30 stitches Okay, so I'm just finishing up my last stitches here, making sure that I have 15 on this side. So I do, so I'm gonna finish by doing my chain stitch here and then turn my work. Then I'm gonna do another treble in the first stitch, second stitch from my hook because I did that chain stitch. So then you just keep doing trebles on this side and then you do just like before, go back and forth on the rows until your work is about two and a half inches from the top to the first base layer. So you can see mine is that far now. So I'm gonna cut my string and then I'm going to finish it off like I did the first part, pulling the loop tight around. I'm going to do this a couple times and then pull my whole tail through and pull tight to make a knot. So then I'm going to grab my, the end of my yarn again, make another loop, pull the tail through again. 
start it off how we started off before. And then you're going to put your hook through there. And pull it tight around your hook. And then you're not going to chain, you're going to go into the first stitch on your base layer. So you can see this is the bottom layer and I'm going to go into the first stitch here. So I'm just going to do a slip stitch so I'm not going to wrap around first. I'm just going to go straight under the V, wrap around and pull through everything. So the V and the other loop. And from there I'm going to do 15 chain stitches. 15 seems to work for most horse sizes unless you ha are making your fly bonnet for a mini or a draft. 15 chain stitches should work. So I'm just doing my 15 chains. So once you're finished your 15 you're just going to go into here, wrap around, pull through, wrap around, pull through three. So you're just doing your normal treble stitches into the top layer. So we're going to do that again, wrap around, go through, wrap around, pull through V, wrap around, pull through three. And you're just going to do your regular treble stitches across the whole top layer here until you get to the other side. Okay, so I just finished my treble stitches across the top row, so now I'm going to fit chain 15 more on this side and then once I'm done chaining the 15 I'm going to slip stitch into the last stitch on the bottom layer so that it matches up with the other side okay so I just chained my 15 now I'm doing a slip stitch in here I just go straight into the V wrap around my hook pull through everything else and then I'm just going to finish it off so I just cut that tail with my scissors pull my loop some big and then same as before you're just going to pull the tail through just don't pull the end through all the way. So hang on to the end of the tail, but pull the rest through, and then pull your loop tight around it. And then just pull the whole tail through and pull tight. Okay, so this is what it should look like right now. Those are for the ears, where the ears are going to go through. So next what you want to do is take the end of your yarn, start a loop again, wrap it around, pull through, put your hook through the loop. Okay, so now that you have another loop on your hook, you're gonna start this at the very corner here. So there's not actually V's here, but that's okay. I'm just gonna kind of start in the corner on the very edge. So just put it kind of under, but don't go too far in, just put it so that there's still only like two loops around, two pieces of yarn. So then you're gonna wrap around, pull through, wrap around, pull through three. This part's a little more tricky since you don't have like your standard V stitches to go into. So you just have to try and evenly spread out your stitches without going too far in or without putting too many close together and then leaving big gaps between. So you just want to make it nice and even. You can see how I'm kind of just picking spots to go under that are a similar distance away. And then however many stitches you do on this side, you're going to want to um, do on the other side as well. So you can see here for this stitch, I went down a lot farther just to show you for this next one. The 
this one here. I go down a lot farther just to show you um, what it looks like. And it kind of just left a hole there. And you can see the stitch looks uneven. So you don't want to be doing that. So I'm just going to actually pull this one out. The nice thing about crocheting is it's easy to take out when you make a mistake. I'm going to take that out and go in a place that's closer to the surface so that I don't leave a big gap. And I'm going to keep going along here till I get to my chains. So this is probably the last one I'll make on this side. And then I'll go into my, stay, my chain stitches. So I'm going in. And then all you're going to do is you're going to go in your chain stitches. And go all the way around the chain stitches. Across the top. Around to the other corner. But once you get to the other side. You want to make sure you do the same amount of stitches as you did on this side. Even though there's no V's. Okay, so I just got to the other side now, and I'm about to do that side, but I'm going to count to see how many stitches I have on this side first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I think about 9 stitches. So, yeah, about 9 stitches. So that's the same amount as I'm going to do on the other side here. And I'm just going to try and evenly space them out. You want to do the same amount of stitches so that you won't have a lopsided. Otherwise it will just be all lopsided and look all weird. So I'm just going to make sure that I do the same amount on both sides. And if you want to get rid of some of these tails while you're going, you can just work over top of them and then they'll kind of just be through the work so you can see what I'm doing here I just laid this tail on top of the stitches and I'm going under and then it kind of just went goes through the stitches like I'm wrapping around it if you don't want to do that if that's too confusing you can just leave it till later because we will be putting all those tails in later. So I'm just doing this till I get to the end. So I think I just have one more. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. So I'm going to do my chain stitch and then turn it. I already turned it. And then you're going to go on the second one from the hook. Like normal. And then you're going to just do your trebles. So you're going to do trebles all the way around. So you're going to put it in the V, wrap around, pull through, pull through all three. Wrap around your hook, put it in the V, wrap around, pull through, pull through all three. You're going to do these trebles for the whole way around until you get back to the other corner. And then you're going to keep doing these rows for a little while. Just back and forth. Okay, so you can see here, I just went back and forth a bunch of times over that, and it's about one and a half inches now from the original chain stitch. So now I'm just going to finish this off like I finished off the rest of them, cutting it and then tying the knot. And then I'll come back to you in a minute to show you how to do the next row. So to start the next row, you want to measure about three inches from the back. And then mark where that spot is, count your stitches from there to the corner, and then however many stitches that is, you're going to want to count the same on the other side. So we're going to start by making our loop, 
we're gonna pull it through just start our row you're gonna put your hook in pull it tight and I'm gonna start on the other side here because I ended off here so then I'm gonna start here because you want to keep going back and forth the same way so that you're working in the opposite direction so I'm counting my stitches here so I have the same amount as on the other side I'm gonna put my slip stitch in so just wrap around pull through both and then I'm not gonna do treble next I'm gonna do actually a double crochet some people call it a single crochet but you don't wrap around you just put your hook through then pull through the first one and then there should be two on your hook that you pull through then you're going to do a treble in the next one and then you're going to keep doing trebles for a while until you get to the stitch that you need to stop at on the other side so that you're starting and stopping the same way in so once you get about three inches from the other side however many stitches that was then you're going to stop and you're going to do your double crochet and slip stitch again on the other side so I'm actually going to put a marker where I need to stop here. So I'm going to put my hook through the stitch where I am going to finish off this row. So I'm going to take my scrap of yarn and I'm going to pull it through there just as a marker so I know where to stop once I get over there. Okay, so I'm just a couple stitches away from my marker. So I'm just going to do a double crochet in this one. Not wrap around, go under, wrap around, pull through, wrap around, pull through, go two. Now I'm going to do this uh, slip stitch, so I'm just going to wrap around, pull through, up both. And then I'm going to take out my marker, I'm going to turn my work, wrap around, do my chain stitch. And for the next stitch, I'm going to do a decrease treble, so the next two actually. So I'm going to wrap around, go in. And then you're gonna wrap around, pull through. So then next we're gonna do a decrease in the first stitch, or two stitches. So we're gonna wrap around, go under, first V. Then you're gonna wrap around, pull through like you always do. And then you're gonna wrap around, but you're not gonna pull through those three loops. You're gonna leave them there. And then you're gonna just go straight into the next V. You're gonna wrap around, pull under and then you're gonna wrap around and pull through all those loops so you're not gonna do you're gonna combine those two stitches into one stitch and then for the rest of the row until you have two left on the row you're just gonna do regular travels so one stitch in each V okay so I just am almost at the end of this row I just have these two stitches left, so I'm going to wrap around, do my, I'm going to do another decrease, so there's two stitches left there, I'm going to wrap around, go in the first one, wrap around, pull through my V, wrap around, but not go pull through those three, I'm just going to go into the, right into the next V, wrap around, pull under the V, wrap around, and pull through all of those. So you're going to want to do this, repeat this same thing for the next couple of rows, um, depending on how much you want it to decrease, you can kind of just see how it looks as you go. This is what's going to create the front piece, so mine is probably going to decrease pretty fast, so I'm going to do decrease every row. So here I'm doing one, and then I I'd like to just do the decrease stitches right on the edges and then go along the rest of the row with normal trebles. So just when I get to the ends of the row, I do a decrease in the last two stitches. So I'm going to do this for quite a few rows. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far. I've gone about nine rows down from when I started um, my decreases. 
so if you want to your tip to go down longer if you want it to be longer at the front you can do some more full rows in there i want mine to be a little bit shorter so i'm gonna do more decrease rows um it really depends how you want yours to look so this is what mine is looking like right now i've done a couple full rows closer to the tip but mostly i've just been doing decreases um if you wanted to leave yours with a square end you would just leave it like this but I'm going to finish mine off with a rounded tip. I'm going to take this. I'm going to do my chain and then I'm going to add a decrease. So I'm just going to wrap around. Under, wrap around, under that one. And then pull through all these. And then I'm going to do another decrease. And you want to make sure you have six stitches left to do another three decreases on the other side. So then I'll have one left in the middle, so I'll just do a regular stitch. And I'll do my three decreases on this side. So it matches with the other side. decrease. We're just going to decrease it really quickly to get that nice rounded edge. So I'm going to do two now on this side. again in the middle just so it's all the same Okay, so in the middle here, I'm actually going to do a decrease with three stitches at the same time. So there's going to be lots on the hook, just because it's a weird number. And I'm going to pull through all these loops into one stitch. And do the next decrease. something like this around the edge. So I'm just going to finish mine off like that. So next we're going to create the base layer for your trim. So you're going to start it off like normal with your loop on your hook and then you're going to 
do a we're gonna do double crochets all the way around so you don't wrap around your hook you just put it through wrap around pull through the V and then wrap around pull through the two left on your hook so as you can see here there's not actually V's here because it's the back of the chain stitch so it just only has one loop so we're just gonna be working in these single loops you can see them all here so we're gonna go into this stitch wrap around pull over the one loop wrap around pull through two so you're gonna do these stitches all the way around the entire border of the fly bonnet until you get right back to this point so you're gonna, for this part for this base where we started our chain stitches you're just going to be working in these single loops once you get farther there will be points where there is no loops or no V's so you're gonna have to just go in and kind of make your own so just keep working your way around wrap around or don't wrap around go under your loop then wrap around pull your loop over wrap around pull through the two so there should only be two on your hook instead of three so then just keep doing these the whole way around okay so I'm just getting to the point here where there's no loops left so I'm just gonna make up my own spots and you want to make sure again whatever you do on one side you need to count your stitches to make sure you do the same amount when you go to the other side so I'm just kind of going under and spacing my stitches out evenly so you just want to keep doing that and there will be parts where there is stitches to go into and then there's areas where there's not Okay, so I finished doing these double cro sti crochet stitches all the way around. As you can see, I made sure I did the same on this side as on this side so that it would look even. So I counted on the one side and then when I went up the other side, I made sure it was the same amount of stitches and I just evenly spaced them. So what we're going to do next is start our actual trim. You can kind of pick and choose this for this vibe on it. All I did was treble stitches of a white yarn so you could just do that if you wanted you can see it's just regular stitches but I did a layer of white for this fly on it for my white one I'm going to be doing white um, slip stitches a row of white slip stitches instead because I really like the design that it makes so I'm going to grab my white yarn gonna loop it around like I normally would this yarn is a lot thicker it's not a huge deal if you use a thicker yarn for just for the trim as long as you use the same size hook so I'm gonna slip stitch into my first one here for my base layer And I just pull through both loops and then I'm gonna just keep doing slip stitches all the way around okay so I've got a couple slip stitches done so you can see how it's making a really cool design and you can see the V's and I like how it shows that so I'm just going to keep going all the way around with these slip stitches. I just go under and pull through both. It's pretty simple. So I just do that all the way around. Okay, so I did my white slip stitches all the way around and I finished it off. So this is what it looks like. You can see all the V's. So next I'm going to get my blue yarn again start a loop put my hook through tighten it and then I'm gonna do a slip stitch in 
the very first row or the very first stitch sorry but I'm gonna work into the blue stitches and not in the white stitches the white stitches don't actually add anything on top they just kind of stick out the side to add a cool design and then I'm just gonna do regular trebles into the blue stitches all the way around okay so I'm at the very tip right now so if I just did regular trebles all the way around the tip here it would probably get too tight and it would scrunch it and it would just not look good so I'm gonna have to add two stitches in a couple of the stitches so in this one I'm gonna just gonna do two trebles so I'm gonna do one treble and then I'm gonna wrap around and put my hook back in the same V that I just did my first one in so I'm gonna do that around for a bunch of them you can just kind of see as you go so I'm gonna put two more in this stitch as well and again you just want to make it even on both sides if you do start to do too many stitches around like two in each stitch for too many it will start to get roughly on the edges and you don't really want that so in the middle I just did one stitch in a couple and now I'm doing two in some more stitches And then once you get around your end, then you can just keep going with regular trebles all the rest of the way around until you get to back to where you started and then you can just finish it off. Okay, so I finished my trim. This is what it looks like. I think I'm just going to leave it like this because I like how it turned out. I could add another layer of white slip stitches if I wanted to, but I don't think I am. So the next step would be to tie in all these loose strings here. So here I'm just grabbing my loose string, putting it through the end of the needle, and then I'm just going to start weaving it through. You want to make sure that you don't, you look on the front and the back to make sure you can't see too much of the needle. You want to hide as much of it as you can through the crocheting. So just keep going through the middle of the stitches, down a row. You don't have to go super far because if there is a loose tail at the end you can just cut it as long as you go through pretty far. So I just keep threading it through and then I can see on the back I don't see the needle too much. So then I'm just going to pull my needle all the way through and then the thread will come through with it and then I'm going to stretch it out so that the it looks all even and the thread didn't pull it too tight. And then I'm just going to keep doing this with all the th loose threads around the whole thing. So once you're done tying in all your strings you want to add the ears. So you're going to want to find a piece of fabric. I'm going to be using this blue fabric because I thought it matched pretty well. That's just what I have lying around home. So you want to unfold it. And then this is what you're going to use your ear height measurement for. Mine was 7 inches. So I made this little pattern. So I measured 7 inches up from the base. And then you just want to measure five inches from the bottom and make sure it's square in the corner 
and then you can kind of just draw draw this edge um, it doesn't have to be perfect just draw kind of an ear shape so then I'm going to fold my fabric over like this I'm going to set this long side of this piece pattern onto the fold and then I'm just going to pin it down and cut around it so then you just want to cut two of these so here are my two pieces that I cut so next what we're going to do is sew along the edges here so for sewing it you just want to start on the corner here and you can even sew it by hand if you want to but I'm going to go forward and then a little back and then forward again just so it doesn't undo and then you want to keep the edge of your foot lined up with the edge of the fabric and just go around your rounded part but keep the bottom base um, not sewed and then you're going to do the same here go back for a bit and then forward again tie it off and then you just want to cut your strings off and you can fold this right side in okay so I'm just going to fold my ear the right way that's what it should look like after you sew it and you just want to make sure your tip gets folded out all the way as much as you can might be a little bit tricky and then what you're going to want to do is put this through the ear hole in your fly bonnet but you want to keep the sewed part lined up with the back of the ear. So I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So just put it through and then you can flip the fly bonnet over like that. And then where the seam is here, you want to line that up with the back corner of your fly bonnet here. Just like that. And then you just want to keep it there. So keeping your seam lined up with the corner, you're going to Pull your ear around so it match, lines up with the hole in the fly bonnet, and you're going to start sewing this around. So you're going to start there. You, again, you can sew this by hand if you want. I just prefer using the sewing machine. And then you're going to keep lining it up as you go around. And try not to stretch your fly bonnet too much, or else the hole will be way bigger than the ear and then it will just not line up nicely at the end so you just want to keep them nice and even together the whole way around and slowly sew around the whole ear so once you're done sewing your ears on you're just going to want to flip them the right way out so you want to flip your fly on it over and then it should look something like this So this is the finished product. I gave it to my coach and her horse Sam and she really liked it and I think it looks really good on him. Um, let me know how yours turn out in the comments.